Now, do you have a reason to b why you think that, that that the perception of this is not as bad as it is? I mean, in other words, you believe it's not as bad as it is. Based on your reading the data, you think, yes, we're getting warmer, but it's not going to lead to the catastrophe. That's what you just right. said. Right. You know, do you have a reason that that's not the common perception? That it is going to lead to a catastrophe unless we do something. Unless we do something about the amount of fossil fuel right. we put in the air. Unless okay. we have some kind of carbon index. Unless we get serious about this, it is going to be a catastrophe. Okay. The first thing I want to say to you is, I'm not stopping anybody from doing any of this. Right. And I don't want to be blamed. <laughs> yes, for the notion that, you know, the Congress isn't going to pass the Kyoto Protocol or something like that. Um, but I think the answer is that whenever you have something that's untied to the data, and when you have people adopting essentially philosophical positions, emotional positions, which the environment tremendously invites, uh, how I feel as I walk through the woods and how I feel as I see clear-cutting or something like that, um, very often from people who really don't understand these issues at all, then it's a very easy thing for an attitude to move in the direction of increasing demand or in increasing hysteria or increasing concern, whether or not that's appropriate or not. And, and you can see these movements take over science. You know, when I was a young person, every project that every grant proposal had to be to cure cancer because it was Lyndon Johnson's war right. on cancer and there was no point. I mean, if you wanted to propose something, you had to find a way to say, well, this is going to help cure cancer, true or not. Rather than diabetes or something. Else. Right. I mean, you couldn't just be doing basic research. Right. So I understand that, that, you know, these ideas can take hold and I understand that generally speaking, the more extreme elements will we'll push that, and the media is not interested in a balanced perspective. I am. Okay. But you're very rare. Well, Jay, and I'm that's the, the truth. Yeah, well, Al Gore. I like him very much. What He's wrong on this, this issue. He's wrong? He's wrong on this issue. That's my opinion. How is he wrong? I like him a lot. I'm very fond of him. Yeah. Um, wish he'd been done president. Some things. Wish yeah. he'd been president. Yes, he's done some things. Was that a yes to wish he'd been president? I don't look back. Oh, that's a cop out. It's not. I don't know how. I don't know how. Given what we've Would you rather have seen George Bush or Al Gore elected when they ran against each other in the year 2000? I like Al Gore. Okay, that's what, you know, just not to be game by trying to say yes or no. I like him a lot. Okay, I hear you. And respect his intelligence, respect his commitment to this issue, yes. respect the book he wrote on the earth, the globe, whatever it was. Yes? Yes. And he's made a movie. Yes. Inconvenient Truth. Yes. And you say about what he says in that movie, what? If I wanted to make a movie that said that, that said what he said, I could make a much better movie. There are a lot of things in that movie that are dicey and that are, and there's a lot that's Okay, but let's just tell me what there is in that movie that's not dicey, but wrong. Okay. Um, Kilimanjaro, as an example of global warming, is wrong. 20-foot increase in sea levels or 40-foot increases, or whatever it is now, is wrong. And, and I think, actually, attitudinally, it's wrong. I think that... You know, the notion that this is a that this is a spiritual or religious issue for us is wrong. It is a scientific matter that we need to look at with as dispassionate a way of seeing it as possible. And if we don't do that, we're just expressing rank prejudices as so Al Gore's movie and book express rank prejudices. That's my view, sure. I mean, he's, he's making arguments. I mean, I love the guy. He's making arguments that, for which there is no data. There just isn't. And he's got these fabulous pictures of, of the United States being inundated. And, you know, and I had somebody call me up who'd seen it and said, wow, you know, I know you live at the beach sometimes, and I have a beach house, and, you know, kiss him goodbye. I don't think so. You know, the UN, and the, by the way, the new UN report, which you're so fond of, 
says 38 centimeter increase. Well, 38 centimeters is a foot? Uh, what? Fond of would not be the way I would characterize what I said. <laughs> I just said that I think they Put listened to scientists, uh, that the UN report was based on uh, conversations looking at scientific data. Charlie, and the scientists the, were involved. That's all I was thinking. Here's the way, here's the way to think about this. It actually. was on the front page of the, I mean, every paper in the world had it huge on the front for, page. For weeks in advance. Yeah. Okay, question number one. You've, uh, you've released the summary. You don't like the UN report? You don't like Al Gore's report? You don't like anybody who doesn't come to the conclusion? I don't mean personally. You because you think they're intellectually wrong. I, know, I do, listen. yes, I do. You think they're intellectually wrong. I do. You don't think they've looked at the data. And you think they exaggerate I, the consequences of global warming. Somebody asked me the difference between me and Al, because, and, I, and I've wondered about it, too. But I think he relies on, on the expert witness. And I don't. I, don't, I didn't talk to anybody. You do the work yourself. Yes. And you don't think he does the work himself? You no, don't think I, he's... I don't think he goes and looks at the data. Okay. I do not. And I don't think he makes his own grass, and I don't... You know, I talked to two people, both very eminent, um, when I was working on the book, and both, you know, they both attacked me subsequently, um, because they were the leading people thinking about this, and I went to them and said, these are my problems. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get good answers back. But Charlie, the, the, the shortest version of this that I have is, I said, okay, we've had half a degree or six tenths of a degree, it's not a crisis. What is everyone upset about it? And the answer is, we're upset about the future. How do you know, because I believe the future is unknowable, how do you know what this is going to be? And their answer is, we have a computer model of global climate. And I say, climate, according to the last UN report, is a coupled, nonlinear, chaotic system. And they say, long-term prediction of climate is not possible. That's what they say. Direct quote. So, I'm saying I don't think that a computer model cuts it. I'm not having it. Think about what I've done here in this conversation. I said, tell me exactly what it is you believe and why you believe it. And what do you say to those people who, who have a different opinion? And you said they haven't looked at the data those, as well as I have. And understand what I'm saying. Most I'm people saying, I know haven't looked at know, the data at all. Al Gore being an example of that. Well, I, don't, I don't know whether he has or hasn't, no, but that's my sense of what he's done. And you think that the reason it's gotten such, I mean, it is now, in the opinion of many, has reached a critical mass, this judgment that it's more severe than right. you think it is, right. is because it has a certain what? Certain, why does it have such currency? Well, first of all, people are... This is the way about America works and gives always, it such It's currency. not America, it's, it's human beings. They line up for the catastrophe. They're ready for it. They're ready for overpopulation. They're ready for resource depletion. They're ready for whatever it is. They're, we're ready for bird flu. I mean, you know, it's going to wipe well, us bird off. Bird flu is not a problem either? It's a potential problem. Could be a very serious problem. Yes, I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, people are, are they're ready. They're excited. They're excited about May Cow. The, I think it's far, for example, I've done this as a sort of test. You sit down at a dinner party and you say, the world is coming to an end. We have the most horrible things in about, And you get immediately the aroused attention to the table. Alternatively, you say, you know what? Basically, everything's good. Well, the world's getting better. Nobody cares. No, they get, they get angry or they turn away. It's not what we want to hear. We want to hear disaster. But isn't that true about writing books and also making movies? Yeah. The, the terrorist threat is Crisis. Cells. Crisis. Tension. Drama. Well, that's what Excitement. you write, is it not? Mm, yeah, I mean, you're yeah. saying about it, it's terrible. A man has this rare, rare cancer and he has, has a certain kind of mechanism within his cell structure that enables him to combat it. And somebody comes along and owns it. I know, but you don't want to read a story that doesn't have a story. Oh, or that doesn't have life and death. Yeah. You know, doesn't or somebody willing to lose their life. Doesn't have or, consequences. Or face the consequence of losing right. their life. 